Hello everybody, I'm Martin. Today we're going to talk about XNet once again. Specifically, how to deal with routing and to increase your channels beyond the eight provided by a single controller. And it all starts with this piece right here, the router. Which frankly is where XNet gets, starts to get a bit funky because we just put it down here, you can already see that already there's an error that says too many channels on the router. Well, let's be clear, you can pretty much ignore this if you are on Minecraft 119, because as far as I can tell, that error message is just invalid. But if we go into the interface, you can see that this is also where it starts to get wildly unintuitive because there's no interface here, nor does it tell you what to do. So let's start with the most basic version of what we're going to do here. And we have two networks, the blue and the red network. And I should be clear, back in my first tutorial, I did mention that there were multiple network colors. There's four of them. And this is where they come in, using this to differentiate between your two networks and the router. But they don't really, and I'll show you in a second why. What we're going to do is set the blue network to send power to the red one. I bootstrapped a little bit of power into this just to show this works, but as always, you start by creating a channel. We want energy, we're gonna hit create. We are going to extract from the battery and insert into our controller. There's also an entry for the router here, but we don't need to pass this any power. Now, the thing we have to do here that is not normal is we must absolutely give this a channel name. And while it might make sense to name this intelligently like blue energy or something along that line, we just need to aim this energy right now. Then on the red network, we would need to go back in. We also need to create a channel for XNet energy on the controller as well we do need to tell it to insert, but we are not extracting from anywhere because it's not coming from this network. Power has also not been bootstrapped into this, and we are also going to name this channel Energy. Now, I need to be clear, while it might make sense to want to name things to be more organized, that unfortunately does not work. Anytime you're trying to send things across to the same channel in different networks, they must be named the same. Which becomes a very confusing mess when you come over to the mapping and the routing interface when it just shows you channel energy and channel energy, which doesn't tell you which control network it belongs to. But what we need to do at this point is then type in energy here, as well as here. And if we come up here, you see power is now being passed up into the red network. And we can now use the power channel across to both of them, they're both using the channel one there. Now, obviously it can be mapped to a different channel. I could have put it on channel seven or something and it would have mapped that just fine. But this is where things just get a bit unintuitive as far as how the routing interface works. And it's been like this for years, so I wouldn't expect this to change anytime soon. Now, what do you do if you want to pass things across a larger span of space and you don't necessarily want to clump all of your controllers in one spot? And there is an answer in the form of the routing network cable and the routing connector because you can connect two routers across pretty much any distance with one of these cables and it allows them to talk to each other. So we can do the same thing we did before and go into this new controller, set up yet another energy channel, name it energy, set up the controller to insert, and then we can go into this router right here, which now shows that there are local and remote channels because these are coming from the other router, and we can make the mapping here. And you notice that it instantly starts getting power from the other network now. Because if we come over to the first one, we already have the mappings all set up over here as well because it carried it over. So that's all fine and good, but what if you don't want to use that cable and you want to do it from a longer distance and you have a lot of power to burn? Well, good news because there's also a wireless router, although it needs to be hooked up to the normal router via routing cable and you need to put an antenna on top of it. So in theory, you could set up something that looks a little bit like this with wireless routers now connected with antennas sitting on top connected by the routing cables. Now I should note they can clearly be much further apart than this. This is obviously not a valid use case. And from what I understand, they can be cross-dimensional as long as both sides are chunk loaded. But we currently have a problem because unlike the routers, the wireless routers do require power and they can't jump from one to the other unless they have power to begin with. So what we can do here is add a connector to it, put it on our blue network, and tell that to provide power to the wireless router. And there we go, this one's now lit up. But this one, however, is not. And this one we need to bootstrap some power into to get it to work. So for purpose of this demo, I'm gonna doss a little bit of power into it to have it get it all lit up already. And you can see that it's already currently draining. And now we can run a connector over to it from the yellow network though. And inside the yellow network, we can tell it to insert power into this. And now with the channel enabled, you notice that this router also has full power. And now we're transferring everything back and forth. I suppose the one other thing I should mention about the antennas is that there are 
really three options. One is the antenna, and you can use that either one or two on top of each other to get greater range but more RF consumption per channel. The other option is the antenna dish, which is even further range, pretty much infinite, I believe, but significantly more power usage. Now, I strictly did energy because that's the easiest way to quickly show how to get this all set up and working, but you can do this with anything, including fluids or items or redstone signals even. It all transfers across your whole network. So you can share your channels and get a whole bunch more machines in it across a much larger area. Now, the way that the router interface works, however, I find extremely clunky. And at this point where you would scale up this high, I would honestly recommend just using Applied Energistics if you have it available to you instead of this. Because as I said in the last one, I find that XNet mostly succeeds for very dedicated systems because things get hard to move around and the interfaces when you start trying to get more complicated get kind of difficult. Anyhow, if you found this video interesting or entertaining, please consider like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.